Hello, people of YouTube, people of internet, and people of world. It is I, the classic Quan, coming to you from this room on a Tuesday night. Uh, let's turn this down a little bit. All right. So today, I'm going to be playing some balloon fight with you guys, which you can see over over there, uh, over there. Um, <clears throat> so we'll be playing some balloon fight with you guys, um, and really, I'm just doing this because I'm prepping for. Um, I'm prepping for Classic Game Fest, which is in 10 days. If you guys don't have wristbands for Classic Game Fest, recommend it. The whole Beer Dead crew will be there dressed as the Mario Brothers. Ah, so it'll be great. But before I get into uh, kind of playing the game with you guys and streaming a little bit, I kind of wanted to talk, hey buddy, I kind of wanted to talk uh, about controllers. So every Tuesday, uh, I post a video um, and kind of just vent a little bit about things or try to inform you guys about things or try to give you some insight about things and just things that I think are uh, relate to the retro uh, gaming world that we don't want to forget that we want to hold on to so bad and so today uh, since I'm live streaming I get a little more time with you guys uh, so before I start playing the game I kind of wanted to just quickly um, go through Kind of the evolution of the controller and i'll talk to you guys a little bit more about that while i'm actually playing the game uh, but i'm just going to kind of show you some controllers and some stuff um, real quick so that we can kind of get an idea uh, of the controllers that i'll be talking about which isn't a lot but it is a lot um, so first and foremost i got them all here to my side um, i will be playing uh, on the old school classic 
Nintendo. I am not using the new updated NES Classic. This is an original controller. This is the controller that I used to play my entire childhood with. This is the actual controller from my youth. Uh, not rebought, not refurbished, not any of that. This is the actual controller from my youth. Um, and, and so this is what we'll be playing with. But uh, if you can just like see how little this controller is compared to my hand, just take a look at that. I mean, that is, that is a fairly small controller. And I'm gonna talk about why that controller is so small here in a minute, but we'll take a look at that. Then we'll look at the next generation of that, which is the Super Nintendo controller. And here's that guy, a little bigger, a little more ergonomic, nice and round. Um, now we got uh, four buttons here and we got the trigger buttons. First introduction of the trigger button right there. Um, so Super Nintendo controller, a little bit more intense, also an original. I never had a Super Nintendo, but this is an original Super Nintendo controller. Also kind of in the same generation, uh, Sega Genesis controller. Uh, so some of you guys are like, why are you showing us all these controllers? We know exactly what these controllers look like. Whoops. We know what these controllers look like. Well, I don't know. There might be some young people out there who have never seen this stuff before. So I just kind of want to put it out there. So this is a Genesis controller. Uh, dark. Um, so you can see kind of the size of that. A little more ergonomic as well. Rounder. A little larger. Um, no triggers. Three buttons. Um, one start button, no select a button, as you can notice, and the D-pad from hell, and we'll talk about that a little bit. Yes, uh, I, I'm sure you're trying to say that I never had a controller, uh, Super Nintendo game, but yeah, uh, I never, I never had one. I know it's crazy. I always had to go to my friend's house to play uh, Super Nintendo. So yeah, so that's why I'm so excited about the SNEN. Uh, SNES Classic coming out because I've never had one and so that'd be the greatest thing uh, ever for me plus Star Fox 2. Um, so after the Genesis um, we get I believe the Nintendo 64 and holy moly does that look a whole lot different. Now we get this nice little joystick here in the middle we got you know six buttons over here we got our d-pad triggers still present memory card and what a z button probably the only time this button ever existed um i don't think there's ever been a z button well that's not true nintendo stuck with the z button they're the only ones um after the 64 I believe we get the first iteration of the playstation uh which is this buddy right here this is familiar to a lot of people nice ergonomic controller um, still fairly small, but getting larger. Double triggers here. And, um, you know, start select the button, different kind of D-pad, individual buttons now versus the, the rounded uh, circle there. And now we don't have letter eight, uh, letters for our buttons. We have uh, weird uh, shapes and colors. And so uh, PlayStation, and PlayStation has stuck with a similar uh, controller style since then um, and then from there we go GameCube and so GameCube actually had the Z button also right right up here nice and purple uh, but so uh, we still have the d-pad then we get the C stick which is kind of a weird thing to get used to um, you know we get a different kind of uh, symmetry for our button layout up here uh, now we only have the one start button no select button anymore that's gone um, and then, like I said, two triggers and the Z, Z button there. Uh, and then I think the most recent thing that I got uh, is going to be an Xbox controller. Uh, this is from an Xbox One, so look at the size of that monstrosity right there. Pretty big. Uh, now we got our, our double joystick action there, uh, which our uh, PlayStation did not, but I believe the PlayStation 2 and every iteration after that did have the double uh, joystick action going on so did the Xbox uh, the original Xbox I believe and, and the Xbox 360 um, and then uh, Xbox stuck with the letterations um, for the buttons um, start and select the buttons as well and now the middle button is usable and double triggers as well um, and so there's kind of a lot there um, Nintendo uh, definitely one of the more innovative in the controller world just because they kept changing the design and um, 
And it's, I, I feel like there's a lot to be said about changing your design so consistently. Uh, always innovating, always looking for the newer and cooler and better thing, um, which I think is really awesome on Nintendo's part. Uh, even when you look to the Wii, the controller was very different. And then uh, looking at the Wii U and now the Nintendo Switch, all of those designs are just cooler and cooler and cooler. Um, and so, um, yeah, so it, it's just kind of been uh, an interesting uh, phenomenon. But for me, I think what's the coolest thing um, about Nintendo or about controllers in general is the size. You look at the size and they've got, gone from really small to really large. Um, and I think the reason that they've done that has very little to do with the change uh, to be more ergonomic, though that is important. Um, and a lot more to do with the consumer that they're targeting. Nintendo, when it first came out, was targeting the younger uh, kids. Um, and so pe people like me that I was a kid uh, when Nintendo first came out. And so the gamer market was created. And so you don't want to get away from them. You don't want to continue to create this size controller when your customers is growing older and older and getting larger and larger. And so the controllers have kept up with that. And so you have that change in the in the market there for uh, the controller being more ergonomic, being more comfortable for for older older people, um, and just being more um, uh, easy to use and more functional there as well. Uh, so I'm gonna put this game on and we'll play a little bit and we'll talk a little bit about uh, about controllers here. So let's turn up the volume here so you guys can hear. All right. So for me, some of the, and I'm going to be looking up still, guys, because uh, my TV is up here, uh, for which I used to play. Uh, so these controllers for me provide a lot of uh, nostalgia factor. Um, it's just, you know, you hold on to NES controller, and I think Memorandum touched on this in a previous video. Um, but you, you hold on to one of these controllers from your youth, and it just brings back all that uh, nostalgic uh, sensation, all that feeling like, oh yeah, I remember this from my youth, I remember this from when I was a kid, and some of that, you know, there's some value there for me anyway, um, especially all, I, I would say, venture to say the most of us in the nostalgic generation uh, find value in, in things that kind of uh, bring back memories of the good old times before we had to work hard for our money, uh, and our parents had destroyed uh, all sorts of uh, economies and, and, and made it difficult and stressful for us to live in this world as we do today. Um, and so there's a lot to be said about the stress and freeness and the carefreeness of, uh, of these controllers. Uh, but when you think about that as the market has grown, as we have grown, uh, that we've been getting targeted uh, by the gaming companies to create a game that's, uh, create a controller that's very specific to us uh, and really, um, just trying to get the um, make sure that you're comfortable with that controller so that you can enjoy your gaming experience. Uh, I have I, I actually looked earlier today, Gabe, uh, to confirm how the tournament for this game was going to work, and they have not yet posted that information. Uh, I did learn that uh, they did post the information for the uh, uh, for the um, why is it escaping me? For the cosplay uh, tournament, which I don't believe that we uh, will actually be participating in this year because they have upped the ante significantly with the uh, with the uh, requirements for the costumes. Um, and so I don't think that we meet the mark on that regard. But we're still going to dress up, guys. Please come find us. We will be the Marios. But yeah, they haven't confirmed this. So I'm just playing through Balloon Fight because I figured that this is probably the best bet because um, I feel like this is probably the most uh, well, tournament specific kind of gameplay style that there could be unless they're going to play like levels uh, and all that stuff. And so once again, uh, Classic Game Fest is happening here in Austin. It's going to be in 10 days. So not this coming weekend, but the weekend after on Saturday and Sunday. It is a huge event. This is their 10th year. Uh, and so it is monstrous. I actually have two halls this year, uh, one specific with bands and arcades and another hall uh, with the vendors and the, um, oh shoot, and the, um, the vendors and the panels that they're going to be having. And so uh, it's going to be awesome. So if you guys have never been to Classic Game Fest, 
highly recommend. I think it's $30 for the weekend uh, wristband, uh, $15 or $20 for the one day pass. Um, it's gonna be awesome. There's gonna be so many people there. Um, uh, some of the great uh, classic game players um, are gonna be there. And so it's just gonna be a great uh, experience. This is the third year for me or fourth year for me uh, that I go and I've never had a bad time. I've just had a good time every single time that I go. The first time I went alone before the guys uh, really banded together and this has kind of become our yearly uh, pilgrimage, if it were. Um, so you will always find us there uh, having a good time. So, um, so the history of this game, Balloon Fight, um, Balloon Fight is kind of one of these random games um uh, that was uh actually created for an arcade i think it's a it was called uh, the company or the arcade was called the nintendo vs uh and it was created i think in 1983 shortly before the nintendo actually came out the the home console and it was uh, subsequently ported in 1986 i think to the nes um uh for home play um so, uh, you know, the game itself, I don't think really has a significant storyline. You play as this dude who flaps his hands with two balloons on his back. And there's these dudes, when you actually play through the, the leveled game, um, there's these dudes dressed up as birds trying to pop your balloon and not let you pass to the next level. And so it's unfortunately not a whole lot more straightforward than that. Um, if you get too low to the water, you'll die. There's also a big koi fish that lives down there. And if he eats you, you'll die. Uh, why I don't know uh, that's just the way that it is um, and so it I guess as far as the history of this game there's really not a whole lot there uh, oh shoot um, the game has um, been uh, redone multiple times and so uh, it's been ported to other systems as well and I think they do play a little bit of homage to it in one of the Smash Brother games um, as well oh look at that i survived um with getting being able to get one of these characters or a trophy of one of these characters um and so you guys will notice that the audio probably doesn't line up with what i'm playing and that's because um the, the video card that i'm using to capture this is uh is terrible with the audio um so we're gonna avoid that and i'm just gonna play the music for this game in the background uh that that's not gonna line up but it's uh you get the idea um, so I hope that answered your question, Memo. Not really a whole lot of history there, but personally for me, there's a lot of history in this game. This game was probably one of the first games that my brother and I played pretty consistently uh, because you can play two-player style uh, in the multiple player, or actually the two-player mode, which you'll see here once I started over again. Um, and so my brother and I had a lot of fun uh, doing that. And so once again, retro gaming, just reminding you of your childhood, reminding you of when you were young, when things were less concerning and bothersome and life was awesome. Um, so yeah, so this game, not a lot of uh, actual game history, but a lot of personal history for me. Um, and that's kind of why I want to win this tournament, just to uh, prove that um, all those hours that I spent with my brother playing this game were not uh, wasted. So a little bit of vindication from my childhood there. Um, so this this mode that you guys are seeing me play right now is called Balloon Trip, and it really doesn't have a whole lot of. Uh, it's kind of a what uh, has been referred to as the original Flappy Bird. Um, if you haven't noticed that similar up and down, front and back, avoid the the, the baddies kind of situation. But yeah, so they've called this the original Flappy Bird at sometimes. Um, and I guess it kind of does have that similar feel, but um, but it's, I, I find this game a lot more entertaining than Flappy Bird. And to be honest, I know Memo uh, did a, um, a video recently about which games you should have on your phone um, that are great to play uh, kind of um, on the fly. I have a really hard time playing games on my phone um, that were not created for my phone. Um, and I know Mammal covered a lot of them that were created specifically for mobile devices and even some of those I have trouble with and I don't know it's it's something about getting back to the controller in your hand um, I feel like that question can be taken a couple different ways Memo, as far as like can there ever be original games anymore I guess you're talking about the comment I was making about comparing this game to Flappy Bird 
Uh, I feel like there is original game ideas that exist. Um, however, uh, you know, it's hard to say because there's so many obscure games that don't really have a home that some people may never play. And then one day somebody comes up with a great game idea, say for a current a console, and then somebody just pulls this obscure game out of the woodwork and says, oh, this game has been done before, but you've never played it. So, you know, does that qualify as an original concept or not really? You know, and that's that's hard to say. Like, I'm pretty sure that the creator of Flappy Bird has played Balloon Fight because I'm pretty sure that dude was as old as I am. But I don't know. I don't know that guy. So it could be anything. coming out when the Super Nintendo Classic Edition comes out and Star Fox 2. Although, I guess it's a sequel that was never released. Oh, crap. Oh, that was amazing. That was unintentionally amazing. You know what I think uh, really makes the big, biggest difference with controllers in your hand versus like say your mobile device or, or using an emulator in your keyboard or even using um, some sort of like ported device like the Mega Man uh, collection which some of you guys may have seen me st stream on Twitch. You, using that um, Xbox One controller to play Mega Man is the weirdest thing that I've ever done. This makes a huge difference and I don't know if it's just because when you play you have a tendency to rock that controller back and forth and you're used to your habits on that controller to play that game uh, or what but it makes a huge controllers make a huge difference and they really do and like i said a lot of it is just muscle memory um that's why that's why a lot of these tournaments um classic game fest uh included allow you to bring your own controller uh because your controller has a certain graininess to it stickiness to it it's got your oils on it or maybe not if you like to keep it really clean or it's got like soda stains on it because you're a terrible uh, keeper of your things and so you've destroyed your control or whatever it is um it makes a difference and so you get to bring your own controller uh which i'm probably gonna do because i know that this controller here has a very sensitive um buttons but very not so sensitive um, the D-pad and so I really have to hit that D-pad um, so if you guys are watching this right now really appreciate it I really hope that you guys would comment and join the conversation uh, Memorandum and, and Gabriel um, are also part of the Beer Dead crew um, and this is our channel uh, which will be streaming constantly and you can look at all the other content on there and it is uh, fun and exciting content and it is great so please subscribe to our channel i think the course of the rest of this week we will be streaming live pretty consistently um and so um typically like i said on tuesdays i will pre-record my videos and post them for you guys but this is such a special week and we're hoping that most of you guys subscribe so you can enjoy our videos uh very consistently um and just know whenever we're doing our thing. So uh, please hit that subscribe button. Please follow us. Um, I will uh, attach the YouTube, uh, sorry, the Facebook uh, page below, uh, but we're the Beer Dead Gamers on Facebook as well. So come follow us there. But the YouTube page really is gonna be uh, your gold line. That's where we're gonna be posting our content. So please feel free to comment. Please like if you're watching this after the fact. Thanks for coming and watching. We really enjoy it. I just want to make mention that if you look at my score, I have reached the top score and ranked number one, which I have never, ever, ever, ever done in my entire life. So this is this is a historical moment for me and my personal uh, record in this particular game, which you would think if I've played it so much since my childhood, I'd be so much better at it than this, uh, but I'm not. This is the greatest thing that's happening to me right now. So you guys are witnessing my personal history, which is fantastic. And I'm glad I could share that with you guys because that's really what this is all about. We just want to share these awesome special moments with you guys. So this right now is history in the making for me. And hopefully I can repeat this when Classic Game Fest comes around.
So I know there's a few of you guys out there watching. Once again, thank you for watching. Please comment, even if it's a uh, small ditty like, hey, it's up, or what you got in your hands there, or hey, what are you drinking, or tell me more about controllers, or what the hell is a balloon fight, why do I care, or when was it Nintendo, I don't know, whatever. Just something, guys. It doesn't have to be a question, it doesn't have to be a comment, it could just be a letter, a number, uh, I don't know. Some sort of alpha numeric symbol. Uh, hell, you can write an emoji if you want. I don't care. We're all about having a good time here. <laughs> so, the maximum points that you can reach in this game is just one point shy of a million. So that would be 999,999. Um, actually not 99, 90. Uh, zero at the end, can't get, can't get ones. Um, so that's the max. So that's what we're going for. I'll rub my nose here. Uh, and yeah. So what's wrong with my face is that Gabriel put a penis on it. I guess that is terrible. So if you guys look below me right here, that's Master Ranchi. He's our mascot, and uh, he's kind of all over the place. He's kind of a cool dude. Um, he likes to drink beer because he's of legal age to do so, <laughs> and so does the rest of the bearded crew. It's the name, and um, and yeah, he's our mascot. Expect to see more of him. He's crazy. Oh, that was terrifying. So, in this mode, it doesn't really matter much, but in the other modes, like the actual gaming mode, if you pop one of your balloons, you actually lose um, the rate at which you can, um, uh, uh, at which you can um, increase your elevation. And so, that, that rate slows down significantly if you pop one of your balloons, or if they pop one of your balloons. But obviously here, it doesn't matter because if I get hit, I die, and uh, it's a one hit kills you. This is like the, the man with the golden gun situation. Oh shoot. Damn it! That was amazing though. That was the furthest I've ever been. That was fantastic. Almost 50,000 points. That was exciting. Stressful, but exciting. So once again, guys, thanks for coming out to the. Uh, oh, I'm bringing this stuff. Once again, guys, thanks for coming out to the uh, YouTube page. We're having a good time, playing balloon fight, watching me train a little bit. This Thursday, I won't be playing this game. I've been practicing a little bit, as um, is pretty evident, I guess, there because I did pretty well. Um, but what we will be doing, or what I will be doing, is streaming Castlevania uh, for the Nintendo. Uh, Memo recently uh, uh, streamed uh, Castlevania, what is it, Symphony of the Night, um, I think that's what it was called. Uh, I'm not too familiar with the Castlevania series, so for me, it'll be a new, uh, unexperienced frontier there a little bit, so we'll have a good time with that. Uh, and I'll tell you a little bit about the, that first Nintendo game, uh, and just some cool stuff uh, that has come with it since. Uh, so Memo did play that game through. He also reviewed the Netflix uh, anime series which has been created for it. So please, please, please go and watch that. Once again, please hit subscribe and enjoy. Let's actually play through the game because who knows? This uh, this tournament may be game related. I don't know. Dun, da, da, dun, da, da, dun. So I know these guys look like flying penguins, but they're not. They're just dudes with beaks for some reason. Um, that's probably a good shot at one. Uh, so they're different colors as you can see there. Um, these first guys, oh, that was terrible. It's terrible for me. Uh, these guys that are green here um, are actually more aggressive. Um, they're the, they're the, technically the, the, the middle uh, difficulty of these characters uh, as far as um, what they're gonna do. The guy that I just knocked down uh, with the pink balloon is, um, is um, is the, the, the easiest. He poses the least amount of threat. Um, 
there is another level above this, and I believe it's like a pink ish rosy colored guy and they're super aggressive oh yeah see at the top there's a yellow he's the least aggressive and then right under him right there um not this guy but the other one that's in pink still flying is the most aggressive he will actually come at you bro i think and then uh, and then the clouds will shoot electricity at you because uh, they're crazy um, and that's kind of like a built-in timer telling you like don't just sit around and do nothing you need to you need to finish this level get to it son and so there's actually tw only 12 uh, unique levels in, in this game um, as far as like the design of the level um, after that it's all um, it's all repetition they do change the coloration a little bit and stuff um, but really it's the same uh, design for the level. So there are um, speed. I guess you can't really speed run this game because there's no ending to it. It's just kind of one of those like repeat until you repeat until you fail kind of games. Um, but there is um, runs with with extremely high. Um, the top scores, high, high scores. Um, and so there's techniques to that, but really um, you just have to be good at the game. And that's really what I like about um, this balloon fight uh, game. And I think that's why the tournament is going to be kind of unique and, and pretty awesome is because the game is inherently um, not really uh, flawed in any particular crazy way. Um, you get what you when you get what you get, and so if you're a skilled player, that was terrible. If you're a skilled player, then you do well. If you're not a skilled player and you don't know uh, very much, uh, then you won't do well. Uh, and that's just kind of the nature of the game, which is great because that's the way that all games should be. Um, you know, like uh, skill based, skill based, and this is this is just that. This is skill based. So practice uh, makes perfect. And I'm not saying that that a lot of games aren't skill based. Um, but you could be, you know, the greatest first-person shooter uh, ever uh, to play the to, to grace MLG. But if you don't know where the uh, weapon spawn points are, or um, the best places uh, for people to camp with a sniper rifle, or um, you know how to adequately shoot the bazooka, um, stuff like that, then then you won't really be um, useful or, or successful. Uh, at that game, no matter how high your skill is, there's some inherent knowledge that goes into that. Uh, and I'm not saying that's not part of the skill, I'm, I'm just saying that that's, that plays a role as well um, in in getting through a lot of that. Let's take another swig here. So getting back to controllers real quick. I did want to talk about the or I did want to show you and talk about the Genesis controller a little bit because uh, Gabriel did bring that up earlier. Oh, the blisters from that joystick. Oh, uh, you were talking about the 64, but that reminded me of the Genesis. I don't know if you guys can see this very well, but this D-pad right here had the sharpest of edges on it, and it was terrible. And this thing gave me more blisters than that 64 controller could ever imagine. And I thought that that was going to be like the worst thing of my life. And oddly enough, great memories, terrible blisters, but great memories. Um, I do remember there being some games where you kind of hold the, the buttons like this. I'm sure you guys remember that. That was always fun. Or with the 64 joystick, you know, getting, getting, getting some of that action right there. And just, ah. Yeah, that was fun too. Good times. Good times. All right, back to the game. Ah. been um, on this game's type 
ever. Uh, so I don't know if I'll ever beat it, uh, but we'll see what it, we'll see if I can get to a million, a million points because I don't think I've ever been to a million points. That'd be pretty legit. And so it's it's always funny to me. Oh shoot, man, they were waiting for me. The D pad from hell. Yeah, that was the D pad from hell for sure. Um, it's always funny to me uh, when people kind of like uh, point run this game because this game is like it's just one of those where. If you play it long enough, you're gonna get the points. I mean, you're gonna get there eventually. It's not like, oh, if you don't get it by this time, then that's it, game over. You have like infinite, infinite time, infinite levels. You could play it safe the whole way. You could play it fast the whole way. It doesn't matter. The only thing that changes is just how long it takes for you to get there. Uh, but other than that, it's like, you can, you can get there no matter how fast or slow you play the game. One of the other things that I love about these old school Nintendo games. Which is great. Yeah, whoever can created the Genesis D-pad can just go to hell. Why would you do that? Why would you do that to kids? Just destroy their hands and their youth. I don't even know if like I got arthritis or car carpal tunnel from like playing that stupid D-pad. I probably have scar tissue in my hand from that D-pad. And <laughs> I think one of the things, great memories from my youth, um, are the uh, are playing with my brother, uh, but more specifically, like the the specific tasks that you were always like given. Like I was really good at strategic play. I always had the ideas of like, oh, this would be good to do, or that would be good to do, or the better option here is to do that. Um, and so that was kind of my thing. I, I'm, I, I play the game fairly well, uh, but I was a lot better at just kind of telling my brother what to do. My brother was really good at playing the game. But when it came to like sequence button pressing, my reaction times were a lot quicker than him, his and a lot more accurate. And so I got the controller whenever that kind of stuff came up. Um, and so I, I'm sure you guys have similar stories with if you had siblings or if you played with other people with that kind of stuff where you were tasked with this thing in this game. Like whenever that came up, here you go, you do it, I'm not even gonna try kind of situation. Uh, high score, yeah, I think that's a bad thing. I, I think being high at any point is terrible. You should never be high even with the score. You definitely don't wanna score and be high. Or so I've heard. I wouldn't know anything about that. Damn it! You gave me bad luck, eh, bro, Biotti. Now I'm dead. Thanks a lot. If you guys are watching, please like, subscribe to our YouTube feed every day this week. You guys are going to be getting live streams from somebody from the Beer Dead crew. My name is The Classic Juan. Um, somewhere out over here, I think, or, or down below is where the comments are. Memo uh, Alejandro is Memorandum. He is one third of the Bearded crew, and the other third is Gabriel Biati. He is also known as Jack of All Gabes. Their videos are in our video storage. Uh, so if you subscribe, come to our page, you can see all those videos, along with some of the other ones of mine, talking about how I think video games may cause ADHD. My favorite video game is Mega Man. And I will be posting my videos talking about the nostalgia generation, which if you're watching this and born in the 1980s at some point, you probably fit in there. So you'll want to watch that video to get all caught up to speed. Uh, Gabe says death count one. Death count one. All right. Fair enough. Death, death quote, I give you bad luck. You're terrible. Let's go back to the balloon trip. Da, 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 da. So I, I think this balloon trip um, is kind of funny because your rank actually doesn't start to change until you get a good ways into the game. I don't know if it's triggered by um, score or by distance. I want to say it's by score. Um, boo. That was terrible. Uh, but I feel like that, what just happened to me, will be happening pretty frequently to a lot of people uh, at Classic Game Fest uh, because... Uh, I think most people won't understand the mechanics of the buttons right away, but I'm pretty sure they'll give people practice. But feathering it is uh, is really important. 
It's the art of feathering the button. It's a skill. So there's a lot of like things that people say to do that like do really well in this part of the game or this kind of game type. Um, they're like, don't move front and back. Only go up and down. Stay at the middle of the screen. Stay in the stay in the back of the screen. Uh, do this. Do that. There. Guys, this is a Nintendo game. There's no right and wrong way to do it. There's no easy way to do it. There's a hard way to do it. If you go all the way to the front of the screen, you're gonna die. Uh, but there's no easy way to do this. Everybody's got their own tactic. Everybody's got their own skill. You kind of just hone it, craft it, and own it. It's kind of like a I would say it's kind of like whittling a piece of wood. Everybody does it. You can do it the exact same way as somebody else's and it's gonna turn out a completely different way. Just like people who try to accomplish things that they see on Pinterest. I mean, seriously, guys, give it a rest. All right. Balloon fight, balloon fight, balloon fight. Well, I almost just died there. And it did that right there. <laughs> I may or may not have to drink while I'm playing this game since every time I practice for any extended period of time I'm drinking. So not the whole not the whole can but some it's like that muscle memory that they say like if you studied while you were under the influence of something then you should take an exam the exact same way that's why you guys fail when you like drink all your energy drinks to study and then you don't drink your energy drink to take your exam you're not under the same you're not in the same state of mind so you fail i know things i think i know things i like to tell myself that i know things Fight. <laughs> All right, I'm a quarter of the way to where I was the last time. Let's see how much. I think the the fastest I've seen somebody get to a million points is like twenty five, twenty six six minutes something like that uh, which is an inordinate time to be focused on this um, but the nostalgic generation has that capability so congratulations guys you have an inordinate amount of focus I think it's because our parents didn't believe in ADHD and so we get smacked if we weren't able to focus for any extended period of time hey I don't know maybe parents still do that I make a lot of generalizations. Also, also another quality of the nostalgic generation, we make a lot of generalizations. Sorry, balloon. So another thing, like I said earlier, <laughs> the points will come. I'm constantly gaining points with the ground that I'm covering here. It's just a matter of um, how long is it gonna take me um, to obtain the points that I want. You know, if I hit all these balloons and, uh, oh, that was terrible. If I hit all these balloons, then obviously it'll happen a lot faster. If I don't hit all the balloons that I want, it'll happen a little slower. So you gotta, you gotta pick your battles. You gotta have a strategy, stick with it. And right there where I died, that was just a poor st strategic decision.
going to be multiple contests at Classic Game Fest this year. Um, and I want to pull the, I'm going to pull them up here real quick just because um, oops. <clears throat> because I think uh, I think there's a lot of stuff that if you guys are watching and are interested in going to Classic Game Fest you guys could totally uh, participate um, just be prepared for uh, and it'd be awesome and so a uh, balloon fight is definitely one of them uh, that one's gonna be a great one um, actually the schedule uh, which is the one that I want to partake in and that's simply a personal decision just because this game uh, had a huge impact for me in my life uh, so that's kind of where I'm at but there will be uh, tournaments for balloon fight uh, that'll be on Saturday. I think that'll be an all weekend event actually. Um, so that one will be going on. Uh, there will also be a Duke Nukem on PC tournament at Classic Game Fest, which will be fantastic. I think uh, maybe Memorandum, maybe uh, maybe uh, Jack of All Gabes will be into that. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, let's see here. There's going to be a panel uh, for women in game developing. Um, there's a cosplayer who will also be um, kind of judging the cosplay contest that's part of that and uh, she's kind of a cool cool chick um let's see here super smash brothers tournament every year uh i quickly learned that what i thought my skill level was it actually isn't i don't know how much of that was just i didn't have my controller versus um uh, i'm just terrible at the game uh what else we got so that's all that's going on on saturday some of those i think are going to be all weekend long uh so we got a Killer Instinct tournament on Sunday, also a Quake 3 tournament on Mac on Sunday, uh, a Tetris attack for the Super Nintendo uh, as well on Sunday, and a Road Rash for Genesis. Oh man, I haven't played Road Rash in years. I actually don't know if I still have that game. If I have Road Rash, I'm playing the Road Rash tournament as well. Um, so yeah, I don't know what the prizes are, and I don't know what the specifics are. They said they were going to post them sometime this week, but they haven't done that just yet. Uh, but I expect that they will hopefully do that soon. Uh, player versus player tournament for which one, Gabe? Because you can't player versus player balloon fight. It's either co-op or the balloon f uh, trip, uh, which is a single player mode. Um, So, and I'm not too sure which one you said. I'll do that one for sure. I'm hoping that it was the Duke Nukem one, but I don't know. But yeah, if you're talking about player versus player for Duke Nukem or Quake 3, I'm totally there. I got your back. Wario's got your, oh, sorry, Waluigi's got your back. I feel like I saw a little bit more of... The tur I feel like there was a few more tournaments, but uh, I'm not 100% certain. Uh, Classic Game Fest is always kind of switching. Uh, I don't, I don't want to say switching. Uh, they're kind of always updating what's going on um, in real time. So there's never any, not that there's any, any consistency, but um, they always like to just keep it fresh, keep it moving. Uh, and there's always something new every day uh, that they're talking about. You know, players that'll be there, uh, people that'll be there. Um, it's just kind of an awesome, awesome awesome experience so if you have kids bring them if you just like old school gaming come uh, they have arcades tons of them classic uh, that are free to play that's right free to play you just walk up to the arcade and you play it and I know a lot of people think to themselves man that seems like it's gonna be a pain in the butt just because there's so many people that are gonna be there and you'd imagine that but it's not uh, you get to play whatever arcade you want and you don't have to wait for very long um, 
it's it's great yeah everyone is super nice there you know it's the art is definitely great they make people make some awesome awesome stuff um that you can buy for your house lamps decorations posters all sorts of just cool stuff um and everybody's there for the same reason and that's because we love retro uh classic gaming it's all about the classic game so classic game fest uh, I can't push it enough. I feel like they should be paying me to plug Classic Game Fest so damn much. Um, but yeah, Classic Game Fest here in Austin, Texas, the end of this month. And that's going to be um, July 29th and July 30th. Uh, so if you're not doing anything, please come to Austin and enjoy that with us. Like I said, the Beer Dead crew will be there. It is myself, the Classic One, Memorandum, Jack of All Gabes. And we actually have... Uh, a fourth uh, who's currently behind the scenes um, and so the four of us will be playing or cosplaying uh, as a Mario Brothers so you'll get Mario you'll get Luigi you'll get Waluigi you'll get Wario you'll get the whole crew and so that'll be that'll be entertaining yes that's me Gabe is the jack of all Gabes and he will be our Luigi I think um, and so th there will be more in our crew um, Going forward, there will be more people hanging out with us. So please come by, talk to us, hang out with us. Um, enjoy a beverage of a multitude of sorts with us. Talk classic games. If there's something that you don't like about the streams, please tell us. If there's something that you do love and you want us to do more of, please tell us. There's plenty of content there. BDLD is what we're calling. Who's... Who's... You're going to have to explain the BDLD for me because I don't know what that is. I'm sure you're talking about our fourth member, uh, but but I don't know what BDLD means. All right, let's go balloon trip. the bdld i just it, it, it's from the email from the i get I, mm, 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 it took me a little while it's the it's the beverage slow my brain down bdld that is gold cool. oh shit i just got eaten I feel like whenever I play this game for the tournament, it's just going to be a crapshoot. It's like, uh, <laughs> it's going to be one of those like, maybe I'll do really good, maybe I'll do terrible, I have no idea. If you're watching, please hit that subscribe button on our YouTube channel. Uh, it means the world to us to have you guys following, watching our videos. Um, we do this for you guys. We like to have these awesome life experiences with you. I, uh, I broke my personal record here, and I'm glad that I was able to do that. We'd share that with you guys and actually capture it um, for the world to see and for me to kind of relive later on. So if you're watching this now uh, live, thanks for hanging out with us, guys. If you're watching this on a rerun, or just streaming it on, on YouTube, uh, uh, not live, uh, please comment. 
please comment below guys and, and, and subscribe uh, we love we love uh, hearing from you guys uh, we would love it if you left comments we're happy to reply we would love it if uh, if you chatted with us while we're streaming um, so that's what we want to do we just want to hang out with you guys uh, in a what's the word here judgment free environment for gamers uh, we know that the uh, gaming community can sometimes feel intimidating um, and, uh, and and we don't like that we want to change that we want you guys to come hang out with us um, and feel like uh, like you can ask questions about random stuff uh, that you may not necessarily be comfortable asking other gamers or just talk about classic games uh, or just uh, just have a good time that's that's really what this is all about so I think I'm gonna call it um, after that run because it was terrible and I don't think I'm gonna do as good as I did the first time but uh, yeah uh, if you're watching this on rerun please subscribe if you're watching this live please subscribe uh, come follow us on our Facebook page as well uh, we'll be giving constant updates so I think tomorrow either Jack of all Gabes or memorandum will be streaming for you guys I'm not too sure what, what content they're gonna be streaming uh, exactly but but I can assure you, it's probably something fun and entertaining and uh, worth watching. So, um, thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for talking controllers with me a little bit. Uh, thanks for uh, watching me practice my balloon fight. Uh, and if you guys get the chance, like I said, please come to Classic Game Fest and come find us. Take a picture with us, chat with us if you want. Um, so I will see you guys on Thursday when I will be streaming Castlevania for the Super, uh, sorry, for the Nintendo Entertainment System uh, once again. So until I see you guys on Thursday, same time, same channel, uh, keep it classic.